What is up guys, welcome back to another YouTube video. Today we're going to be creating a puffer jacket in Clothe 3D or Marvelous Designer. If you want to skip the whole tutorial and just get the project files, they are available on my website for $2. Um, or you can grab them for 50% off the entire store with code SUB1K. I'm also going to be putting out codes throughout the video to get 100% off my entire store. Um, so make sure to watch the whole video to get a discount code. When you download the project file, you're going to get your textures pack, which the PSTs will allow you to add a logo. Um, and then the normals will just add a little bit of texture to it. And you'll get the blender file. Um, a walk cycle, a Lembic file, and then of course the Clothe 3D and Marvelous file. To get started, we're going to import the Lembic file and make sure you align the bottom to the ground and have your scale to meters. From there, we're going to select the polygon tool and just create a basic framework for the front of our garment. Once we're happy with that, we can use the curvature tool or C to adjust the arm section of the garment. From there, we can press Z to adjust the points accordingly. This is going to be a little bit oversized, so I'm going to adjust it just so that it looks a little bit more oversized and fits the body better. To create the right side of the garment, we can right click and say symmetric pattern. This will allow us to make changes on both sides without actually making changes on both sides going forward. Once we're happy with that, we can copy and paste one side of the pattern to form the back section and reposition it in the 3D window. We're then also going to use a symmetric pattern on the back side. After that's done, we can press in on the keyboard to start sewing. We're going to sew the front and the back respectively and then link them on the sides and top, followed by simulating it just so that we can see it fits well. I'm really happy with that so far. This puff is going to be a little bit longer, almost touching the knees. So how we have it now looks just great. Next thing we're going to start with is the arm. Your sleeve is made up of two sections. So we're going to start with the one section and then create a symmetric pattern for the other side. To position it in the 3D window space, we're going to adjust it just so that it fits over the arm. Before sewing it, simulating it, and then sewing it again. To make things permanent, we're also going to merge the pattern. Once we position it, we can sew it to the front of the garment and the back of the garment, and then simulate it. Because it's going to be a little bit oversized, we're just going to adjust the bottom before simulating until we're happy with the process. We're then going to sew the bottom of the arms together so that they can connect properly. I'll continue to make it look a little bit oversized by pressing Z to adjust the points. In order to align, we can select both points at the bottom, right click, press align, and then the X axis. This is going to align it straight so it looks good. Once we're happy with that, we can copy and paste the pattern over to the right arm before adjusting it in the 3D space sewing it and then simulating exactly the same how we did with the left arm so far so good we are now going to create the wrist section of the garment i'm going to create a height of 20 millimeters and a width of 100 just to get a basic shape we're then going to adjust it so that it fits around the arm nicely to sew the wrist to the sleeve we're going to use the sewing tool and press shift and select both sides so that it sews together nicely. We're also going to sew each side of the wrist together. For the 3D window space, we're going to right click on the object and say superimpose under before simulating it and then adjusting it to our liking. Now that that's in place, we can add some weft to it. This basically shrinks the material and almost adds some elastic to it. We'll continue this on the right side by using the symmetric pattern and do exactly what we did to the left arm, but to the right arm now. In order to extend the sleeves, we can select both the wrists and freeze them. Once that's complete, we can extend the sleeve some more so they fold over the wrists better, giving it that extra oversized look. 
Once we're happy with how it looks, we can unfreeze it. We are now going to start working on the zipper section of the garment. To start off, we're going to use a rectangle tool to create a 10mm width for the left side of the front of the garment before extending it down and sewing it onto the garment piece. We're going to create the left side and use a symmetric pattern tool to create the right side. Because we've already sewn the garment together, we're going to use the sewing tool to delete the sewing and then relink it using the free sewing tool. When we simulate this together, our garment should still be in one piece. We're now going to create the next section to link to the zip. We're going to try copy the heart using a rectangle tool and then extend it so that it fits throughout the neck. We're going to use the free sewing tool to sew this neck piece onto the zipper and then onto the front of the garment. It's alright if the neck is a little bit oversized because that's kind of the look we're going for. We're then going to copy this and attach it to the back of the garment. In this case, I took a long route, but you can always just create one long piece, which will probably actually be a lot easier. Once you've created the left and right of the back of the garment, we can start to sew the neck piece onto the back of the garment using the free sewing tool. Once everything's been sewn together, the back and the front of the neck, we can simulate it and we should get something like this. We can now merge the back of the garment together to get rid of that sewing line. Once that's done, we can extend the back of the garment to create less of a neckline before simulating and repositioning it in the 3D space. We can do the same to the, the back of the neck by merging it. I noticed that the front of the garment, the sewing was a little bit incorrect, so I deleted it and reconnected the zipper to the front of the neck. For the next part, we're going to do the bottom of the garment by using the rectangle tool and setting the height to 40 millimeters and the width to whatever you want. Uh, this is basically going to wrap around the front and the back of the garment so you can extend it to almost double the length of the front side. Once you're happy with that, you can use the sewing tool and hold shift to connect the bottom piece to the front of the bottom of the garment and the back of the garment. In the 3D window, you can use the superimpose over before simulating to make it get to the right position quicker. When you click simulate, you should get something like this. It doesn't look so great, so I'm assuming it's a little bit too big. So I'm just gonna extend the shape of the bottom piece of the garment so that it doesn't frail as much. I'm also gonna make it a little bit smaller so that it doesn't stick out. Once you're happy with that, you can sew each side of the frail together. We're now going to work on the actual zipper. So let's delete the sewing of the zipper before using the zipper tool to select the left side and the right side. Make sure to double click to place these zips down, else it's not going to work. When you click simulate, you should now see that there's a zipper. To adjust the bottom and the top of the zipper, you can click on it and go into your property editor. I'm going to select my stopper to open end because I don't really like how the closed end looks. Um, you can also adjust the puller and slider, but I like how it looks. So I'm just going to keep it how it is. Make sure you set the teeth type to object and not texture. This will help when you've taken it to Blender. For the next bit, we're going to work on the pockets. For the next bit, we're going to work on the pockets of the garment. We can use the internal polygon line tool to start this. You can put your pockets wherever you want, however you want. I'm just going to create them about this size. Once you're happy with that and you've positioned it on your garment where you like, you can use the cut and sew tool and then reposition it in the 2D window space. Because we want there to be a hole, we can use the internal line tool to create a line down the middle before cutting and sewing the section. I'm going to copy this layer over, you'll see why now. 
The bottom piece is going to be for the zipper and the top is going to be almost like a cover for the zipper. We can delete the middle sewing section on both sides to apply the zipper. Sometimes it doesn't work all that great the zipper so I'm going to leave a small gap at the bottom. We can, we can do this on both sides before simulating. We now want to sew the top of the pocket to the bottom, so we can use a free sewing tool to do this for both sides. We're then going to delete the middle of the top pocket to allow an opening for the zipper to come through. This can be done on both sides as well. Once you're happy with that, we can simulate it and you should get something like this. Now we can start creating the puffiness of the puffer jacket. Before you do this, make sure to write down the distances for each section of the jacket. So for instance here, I'm going to be doing 105 millimeters. You'll see why you must write this down in a bit. I'm going to create the sections for the front of the garment at 105 millimeters and then just adjust the top bit a little bit. I'm going to stick around 105 millimeters and 110 millimeters throughout the garment. Now I'm going to do the top section of the front of the garment. You'll see now I keep it around the 110 millimeter distance. Once I'm happy with that, I can go into the arms. I'm going to do the same thing. So you click on the bottom line, create an internal line, and you make sure that there's multiple offsets. I'm just going to carry on doing this to the right arm and then also the back. The back, I'm going to be matching with the front of the garment in terms of distance. So now that you have written down your distances and you know which sections are which distance, we can go and use the fill tool. We're going to select the areas that are 110 millimeters and copy those over. We can go into the property area and set the duck to 9t over 10 and the quilting distance to 110. Now your quilting distance is the distance between those offsets that you set. So I set 110, so I'm going to set the quilting distance to 110. For your weight, if you have selected four different pieces, you miss times about four. So I'm going to have 150 gram material. Uh, that's what I'm ranging at. So I'm going to times that by four and get 600. Now we can do the same for the 110 millimeter sections, copy them over, select duck 90 over 10. Now for the 110 millimeter sections, there's only three. So I'm going to times 150 by three. And then let's do the, the neck piece. Same thing. Quilting distance 105, weight is 450. Um, and just to make sure we've done everything similar, we're gonna select them all and select realistic quilting line on. Now you should get that puffer look. Now in the past, there has been another way to do this, but I feel like this looks the most realistic and you don't have any serious issues when doing it. I noticed that the zipper was flipped, so I'm just going to reset that, click on it, and flip normal, and simulate again. The neck for me was a little bit too saggy, so I made it a little bit smaller in both the front and back areas. Just to make sure we get the same pattern throughout, um, you can deselect your material thickness on the left and you'll see there's a, a gray section. These are all flipped the wrong way. So you need to click on them and say flip normal and you should get the results you need. This will help when you take into Blender and resync your textures. I'm gonna add a little bit of detail in the front by creating an internal offset um, of about 15 millimeters and use the cut and sew technique to separate this. To create an extra layer, I'm gonna use the clone over tool. 
Now to add some extra detail in the fabric. Uh, I'm gonna go over to my fabrics panel and select a nylon fabric and apply the pattern to it. I wanna create some different materials throughout the garment. So I'm gonna select some sections that I wanna be white and apply the original fabric to that. I'm gonna adjust the fabric of the main color to black as that's going to be the color of our fabric once you take it into blender you can see it's already starting to take shape i'm still not too happy with the neckline so i'm just going to make it a little bit smaller again in order for our textures to align in blender we can go into the uv editor and tile our patterns we can right click and reset uv to 2d pattern arrangement this will give us a similar view to our 2d window we can then set up our pattern whichever way we wish, but I normally like to set up the back with the back, the front with the front, and the arms with the arms. You'll notice that the zips are all stacked against each other, so you just want to separate these in case for some reason in the future you decide to change the color. It should end up something like this. So I have three tiles set up. I'm also just going to create some extra detail in the zipper by using an internal line and setting about to five millimeters to split the zipper. I'm then going to use the cut and sew to create that separation. I'm then going to apply a new color to the zipper. I'm going to do the same thing for the pockets by using an internal line, cutting and sewing, and then using the curvature tool to just fine tune the pockets. I'm gonna repeat this process on both sides. For more detail, I'm gonna add another fabric to the garment. I'm gonna use the main fabric and make a copy of it, change the color and rename it. I'm gonna apply this to the changes that I did recently. Because I made these changes with the zipper and pockets, I'm gonna to have to go back into the UV and just adjust it. I'm gonna place these in the first tile. Now that I'm happy, we can start the exporting to Blender process. So I'm gonna export as an OBJ and save it into my folder. Deselect the avatar, ensure that it's on thick, and I have around an 8K pixel ratio. I can then click OK. We're now gonna go back into the UV editor and bake our textures. This is what is gonna to connect to our Blender file. Once this is done, we can open the OBJ in Blender. We'll see that it is gonna be completely white because we haven't added any of the textures. I'm just gonna adjust it in the camera position before going into the shader panel. From there, I'm going to add an image texture to the main material. We're only going to be working with the normal textures from the export as the diffuse textures is going to be used for logo placement and stuff, which we don't really need right now. So I'm going to connect the image texture to a normal map. We can add the normal map by clicking Shift A and then type in normal map. We can then go to the first normal and say open. This will basically tile all our normals together. We still don't have much here, so let's add a base color. We can go into our materials tab and recall it main. We can also adjust our details. We are now going to fine tune our main material a little bit. From here, if you guys want to see how to set up textures and stuff, you can do some more research in Blender, but this is just a basic run through on what I'm going to do. Um, I'm going to speed this process up because it's really depending on what texture you're going for. You might want something rougher, more reflective. Um, it definitely varies depending on your taste. For further details, we can go through our materials tab and just try to figure out what fits with what. Uh, so you can see here like the, the materials that are actually called materials are normally like the zippers um, 
and stuff like that. The stuff that wasn't labeled in our marvelous or clear file. Uh, I'm just gonna set this to like a metallic silver looking thing with a little bit of reflection. You get the idea. Once we've set up all our materials um, and we're happy with our result, we can export now. And you should end up with something like this. If you did enjoy the video, please make sure to drop a like and comment and sub if you're new here. Um, don't forget to join the Discord. I'm dropping a video every week and there's definitely gonna be promo codes. And I'm always handing out promo codes to people in our Discord for my store. I really do appreciate the support and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.